go record. Okay, so I'm going to get it started now with the recording. I don't want to forget to do that. Um, okay, well, let's get going. It's um, 12.06, so uh, Eastern time. So let's get going. Thank you all for joining me. I am very, very excited. And I just got a shipment of new thread fusions. Uh, I got one yesterday. I got one on Thursday as well. So I am stocked up for right now. But um, I am going to show this um, both a Baby Lock Triumph as well as a Bernina L890. And you'll have to bear with me for a minute as I change machines around. But I'm first going to show it on the Baby Lock Triumph and talk about the two different models of Thread Fusion that are available to you. <clears throat> and also, you can purchase this at um, you can go to my website, gailpatrice.com, go into the shop and click on Thread Fusion, and you'll see both the large and the universal size. And I'll show, tell you about that in just a second. But for 10% off, the code is all uppercase T F live, L I V E. Let me let in a couple of more people. So the code for 10% off is TF live all uppercase. So, and I'll be very happy to ship that out to you. So I am going to um, switch cameras for a second and um, show you both of these on a table shot and then we'll go to the machine, okie doke. So anyone have any questions before we get started? Just unmute yourself and then remute yourself after you've asked your question. Anyone? Hi, Connie. Hi, Cornelia. Let's see who else I see. Kim, Paula, Paul. I think that's all that's showing up on my bar across the top right now, but I know there are way more of you in there. Let me let, here's Linda. Let me let her in. Hi, Linda. Ooh, Barbara. Hi, Barb. So, okie doke. So let me switch over to the table shot because I want to give you a close up picture of both of these and talk about these as we go along. So I'm going to go over to the table shot. Okay. And you're looking at these uh, straight down. So this is the large and you can see it has these concave um, cutouts on the sides. And that is to allow it to nest between the spool pins on your serger. Uh, it will fit in any configuration on your serger because of these. We worked on this. Originally, we had a round base and we found that you couldn't move it around to all the different spool pins because it just it didn't fit between them. So we came up with this design, which I think is really cool. This is a solid base and it's um, got four non-skid rubber feet. It's kind of hard to see um, with black on black, but there are four non-skid rubber feet. So it really stays very stable and stationary on any serger. And these pins are solid metal. Let me just tip it a little bit and show you. It unscrews so that you can pack it flat in your thread fusion pouch. And let me just show you that for a second, because that is a free pattern for this. And this kind of gives you an idea of some of the incredible thread blending that you can do. And I'll pull in just a little bit closer so you can really see that. You can see I use two or three different threads on this chain. I know I use two different uh, yellows, one yellow and kind of a yellow orange on the center one. And then on this um, pinky red one, um, there was also a lavender thread in there. And I did the same thing for the serger chain that I used to uh, make the tassel. 
So let me just put that aside. But this will fit the large. I actually had a large and a small one in here uh, for the thread fusion stands. I had packs of needles. I had a little pair of scissors there. I think they were like four or five inch scissors. So there's plenty of room in here. And that is a free pattern that'll be available. But let's get back to the other thread fusion. Here is what we are calling the universal. Now this one is two and five eighths, I believe across. Let me just make sure I'm giving you the right measurement. Two and three quarters, two and three quarters. And this one has a slightly larger center hole. Um, and I'll tell you about that. I'm gonna show that to you on the baby lock serger. This has the exact same thing with the screw in pin. So you can undo those if you wanna pack that flat. And on this one, we have on the bottom that same non-skid rubber, but it's in a ring. And um, that will, again, hold it stable. So if you um, have a smaller profile machine and you wanted to purchase um, a smaller thread fusion, you can still do that. Even though the um, hole will accommodate a flared pin, it will be very steady and stationary on a straight pin design. So I'm going to go over to the machine. Let me in. Let let me let Karen in here. Um, I'm going to go over to the machine and show this to you. So you can see this. Oh, and let me give you the measurement while we're still on here. So going across from wide side to wide side on the large, it is exactly four and a half inches. So, or four inches, excuse me, four, four inches. And from the center ring to one of the outer pieces, it is two inches exactly. So that gives you an idea about that. So let's go over, I'm gonna switch my camera around and I kind of was moving, um, I was kind of moving my camera and the machine around. I have it tilted because typically um, in my Zoom classes, you're not looking at, um, this far over on the right on the machine. But I wanted to show you what I was talking about with the wider hole on the universal size. You can see that on the baby lock sergers, their spool pins are not straight. They flare part way down. And so we wanted to design one so that it fits flat on the table. But the other thing that we discovered, and this kind of goes back to the original old thread palette that was very small. It does not have to sit all the way down on the table to be used. And I'm going to show you how I like to set that up. And this one is already set up and threaded. And I'll show you that in just a second. So in your baby lock accessory pouches, you have these little discs. I call them surger coasters. Uh, Baby Lock calls them large spool discs. They're rubber. And I think mine came with three of these. You can put either one of them on or two. I put two on just to show you. And you can see the large thread fusion just like that on this. And it stitches. It stays perfectly um stable. It's not a problem at all as far as that goes. And um, it's far enough away from the top of the thread antenna that the feeding on it is absolutely fine. So I'm going to leave this on the chain looper position right now. And I have the machine threaded up, but um, and I'll do a little bit of stitching on it. And then I'll show you how to put multiple threads in um, the looper. And this is the same whether you're using um, the chain looper, lower looper, upper looper. Um, I think on the upper and lower loopers, because you're using two of them, I might not use three 12 weight threads, but I have used, believe it or not, up to um, 
buy four or five embroidery, machine embroidery weight threads in the looper. And it's absolutely beautiful with the upper and lower looper. And um, I can show you that as well. In fact, maybe... Well, let me just show you, I'm going to show you that in action. And if you'll bear with me, I'm going to go back to my face view because um, sometimes people get sort of dizzy when I move the camera. I'm just going to turn this around so you can see this perfectly stable on this. These um, serger coasters work very nicely. And I know it's a little bit dark on here. I have a an odd light over to the right, but it's not throwing quite as much light as I'd like it to, but that's okay. Um, this is like a little platform, keeps it nice and stable, works great. So that's the large. And um, the even the universal size will fit. Um, let me go back to me while I'm talking so that you don't have to watch this. Sometimes people, it kind of bugs them if they have to see the camera moving around. You can see me moving around from side to side. I'm just going to turn this around. And thank you very much for coming over to Zoom. I appreciate that. As I say, um, I don't know what was wrong. My YouTube live was perfectly fine the other day, but yesterday um, when I was just getting everything set up and testing it again, um, all of a sudden, I had all these odd things happen with the camera and it was kind of all, it was useless. Let's put it like that. The picture would have been not good to look at for you. So I'm going to just make sure that I have my camera focused on my foot. So now let me just go to that one. Yep, that's not bad. Let me just move it over just a smidge and straighten it out. And is that bright enough for everybody? Nod your head up and down if it's bright enough for you. Okay, good. All right. So I am set up for a narrow cover stitch. And um, on the Thread Fusion stand, I have three 12 weight threads on there. So um, you can see I pulled them through already. I use, I always use a piece of starter fabric, but I've got um, kind of a peachy, a rose color and um, a bright kind of a marine blue in here. And then I have two serger cone threads in my needle. So, and I have my stitch length. Now, whenever you're using multiple thicker threads, heavier threads, 12 weight threads, but especially eight weight threads, um, you will always want to test your stitch length. Stitch length is really important. If you find that your fabric is not advancing correctly under the foot, it's probably because your stitch length is, um, it's too short. And so lengthen that out, but do all of your testing on your scrap fabric. And one other thing, let me go back to me for just a second. Um, one other thing that's really important when you're using multiple threads is stabilize your fabric with something fusible. Now, this one is just... Um, Here's the right side. This is kind of a, just a medium weight woven fusible stabilizer. Um, this one, that's really, and I'll show these under the other camera too. I used a lightweight fleece. This is um, Fusion fleece that OESD makes. And I, I really like this for different projects. It's, it's a nice weight, but you definitely don't want to use multiple threads, even on a heftier fabric, without stabilizing it with something fusible, simply because it will pucker. So definitely give yourself that chance to get a nice finish. Now, as I said, um, I'm set up for a narrow cover stitch and I'm going to go back to my machine. Whoops, hit the wrong one. Hang on a second. There we go. Okay, so I'm going back to my machine. Um, in cover chain stitch mode, <clears throat> you all know that you're always going to start with your fabric under the needles. You're not going to start and chain onto the fabric. You will jam 
your machine. And that's on any brand machine. So um, put my presser foot down. Now, I wanted to do some curvy lines on this. So on the left side of the Triumph, there is a knob. It doesn't have any labeling on it, but it has kind of a raised curvy whirl on it. And if you turn the dial all the way down to where that curvy whirl is the narrowest, that will lighten your presser foot pressure. And so I've lightened mine up a little bit and I'm stitching and my stitch length on this is a little bit longer than 3.5. And everything is feeding through very nicely. Let's take a look at it from the front side. Really pretty. And I'll put this under the, um, the table camera. And let me shorten that stitch just a touch and see what that looks like. It's still advancing nicely, so it's not a problem. I'm gonna raise a presser foot and turn. I think I'll raise my needles too, so I don't get a big bunchy thing and put my pressure foot down again. Now this is with a shorter stitch length and now it's about a little bit longer than three. And the thread fusion stand is not budging. It's absolutely solid and smooth. So you don't have to worry about that um, moving around. I'm going to just raise my needles. I have my little blocking tool here. I'm going to cut my needle threads. Pull this out. That will lock my last stitch. And let's go over to the table shot and take a look at this. So this is, let me let some couple other people in here. Um, let's go to the VZ X. Okay, get this out of the way. We don't need this anymore. Here are my other thread fusions. So you can see here it is. Let me bring the camera down just a touch. Okay, and let me let in a couple of other people. Okay, now. Here it is with that longer stitch. It's a, and I would give this a press afterwards too, because even with the stabilizer on, sometimes it can be a little bit puckery, but that's this type of puckering presses out with a little bit of steam. But here it is with the slightly shorter stitch, which I think is just beautiful. And I think I'll brighten this up a little bit. I think that's much better. Is that better for everybody? Not up and down if it is. Okay, so here we have it with the shorter stitch. This is a slightly longer. And here are my three 12 weight threads just to show you that it did that beautifully. So no muss or fuss. Um, if you're in cover chain stitch mode, you know that if you're using decorative thread in your chain looper, that you're always going to stitch with your fabric wrong side up. Here are my two needle threads. So, and this is my chain looper thread. So you can see that that worked out beautifully on that. So that's very nice. Um, I want to show you a couple of other samples too with different stitching too. This is just one that I did randomly. Um, and I'm going to lower the exposure on this. It's a little bit washed out. There we go. Okay, so this one is again a narrow cover chain or cover stitch. And I had three different threads in here. One of them was actually an eight weight thread. And then on the side of this, I did what I like to call chunky chain stitching. And this is with two eight weight threads in the chain looper with the single needle. And just to show you what it looks like on the back, that's the way it was stitched. But it's really a beautiful way to blend the threads. And I'm going to show you a comparison. Let me just pull this over. Um, this is something that I did a while back. This is when um, what it looks like when you're using a traditional variegated thread. And you can see you get the blocks of color, which is very pretty. 
you get the yellow, um, green, blue, pink, yellow, green, blue, pink. And it's very predictable on the order of the stitching. And they're like little blocks of color. But the difference between that and using thread fusion is this. <clears throat> Excuse me just a second. And let me just change the, the lighting on that. This one was using either four or five machine embroidery weight threads. And one of them was um, a thread that had a little bit of a metallic filament going through it. So you can see a tiny bit of sparkle here and there. And um, it is, um, it's just beautiful because what happens with thread fusion is as the fat, as the thread twists going through the machine, um, different colors come to the forefront. So it's just a very subtle, beautiful way to blend the colors. Like here you can see the green, then you see the blue going into that rosy, pinky red color. And in different parts of the stitching, you can see a little bit more sparkle here and there. So it's kind of a cool thing. And for anyone who wasn't here right at noontime, let me just mention, I am recording this. So if you missed the beginning of this um, little Zoom live, no worries. You'll be able to see it in the recording. So, and that'll be posted up, I think on YouTube. So um I just want to mention that if you weren't here right from the get go, that's you're you're not missing out on a thing. So you can see it's subtle and beautiful. Now I want to just show you also in overlock mode. This one, I was thinking that I had only used two threads. Let me brighten that up a little bit, but then. When I looked at the very edge of this, I realized I used, these are embroidery weight threads. I used a hot pink, a green, that marine blue, and a lavender. So this one has four machine embroidery weight threads on it. This is a three thread wide overlock stitch. Just beautiful. And um, so those threads were all in my upper looper. And if I flipped it over to the underside, that's just my single lower looper thread. So um, the you can use up to, I'd say up to five. You, you might even be able to get in six. You'd have to use different spool pins. But I think for the best result, I think I'd go for four to five five of the machine embroidery weight threads on that. You could even, if you wanted to, shorten the stitch just a little bit, simply because this is, um, a, they're all lightweight threads compared to the 12 weights and the eight weights as well. So um, I had a lot of people when Thread Fusion came out, let me go back to me for a second. Um, I had a lot of people say, well, wait a minute. Now, do you thread, thread your machine one thread at a time? No, you're going to um, put all of your threads on your thread fusion stand, choose the appropriate um, spool pin for them. And I still have these on my chain looper spool pin. You can just see off to where my hand is. But I want to show you also how to actually thread the machine, okay? So I am going to open up the front and I am going to remove these just to show you. So I have, um, I think I'm gonna need to turn my machine just a little bit more. I should have this on a Lazy Susan or something. That would make it real easy, but oh well. It wouldn't be too, too stable either. Okay, so let me see. Let me get my camera. Look away if this kind of bugs you. I'm going to move my camera so that we can see. Now, uh, I think I need to get it just maybe a little bit higher. And 
tilt it over. Okay, so um, on this, let me just. I think that's better that you could see like that. And you can see all my little wires over here for my uh for my machines. Okay, so I have come through here, gone from front to back, underneath the little bunny ear on the side, come forward, brought it down under the hook, and here are my three threads right here. So now I'm going to lower this down and show you how to do this. So I want these threads in my chain looper. Now, uh, let me let these three people in. Hi, thanks for joining us. Um, I just mentioned earlier too, if you missed the beginning of this, no worries. It will be recorded and available on YouTube. So don't you're, you're not missing out on anything. So you'll be all set to go. Okay, so I have my um, thread cradle right here. And what that is, I'm just using a long piece of serge or comb thread and I have folded it in half and I have my two cut ends and I am going to lock my threading tubes and get the loopers in the correct. Okay, you heard them lock in. Now, I am going to put the two cut ends of my thread cradle in the chain looper threading port. And if you're not familiar with how to use a thread chain or a, a thread cradle, excuse me, um, definitely go to my YouTube channel under search or tip clips. And when you scroll down, you'll see one on how to use a thread cradle. So um, you'll have very in-depth information on that. I'm gonna get my actual threads out of the way. I'm gonna put this into the threading port for the chain looper. Now, <laughs> when you're using this, you definitely wanna hold on to the other end that has your loop on it, because if you let it go, it'll fly through the machine and come right back out again. Push this. Now, this, is here and the other end of it should be visible in the there's a little kind of a little um block right over here on the left so let me i'm going to bring my camera in so you can see exactly what i'm doing and i'm going to brighten up that exposure because it's dark in here. Unfortunately, the um, machine lights don't light up the inside. Let me bring in my, um, I'm gonna bring in my out light also, see if we can get a little more light on the subject. Yes, I think that's better. Okay, good. So, cause this is the most important part of it. Okay, so my thread is here. Over here, you can just see on the left that in this little box that's under the table of the machine, I opened the left door. Um, that's where the ends of my thread cradle are. So I have my loop here. Now, because I've got three 12 weight threads, I'm gonna bypass the threading port um, where that loop is. And I am going to put them in the brackets that are on the machine. Um, let me just show you that. Let me move this over for a second. You have, here's my loop. You can still see that hanging out of the chain looper threading port. You have these three bypass ports on your machine. And one is for the upper looper, it says you, there is a lower looper L and I want the chain looper bracket. So I'm going to put my three threads right through here first <clears throat> because these are kind of heavy to go through the um, air threading tube. So let me get these into the bracket right here. And 
Now I want you to watch right down here and let me see if I can bring the camera in just a smidge closer. Yep, okay, I think that's gonna be good. All right, now I'm holding onto the threads that you saw on the far left. I'm going to unlock my threading tubes and you can see that thread cradle is still in the threading tubes down here. I am going to take my locking um, tool and pull that chain over till I see the loops. Okay, so I see my little lasso or my loop for the um, threads to uh, be pulled through. I am going to take my three 12 weight threads. I'm going to put those in the last one. I'm trying to work around my camera right through here. And you only need maybe a couple of inches to pull along. Now I am pulling from the opposite side. I'm going to back my camera out a little bit so you can see more clearly. I think it's a little bit too close. I think that shows you. Okay, so I have my three threads in here. I am pulling my thread cradle and that is going to pull my three threads. Make sure it's not hung up over here, which is easy to do. It's gonna pull it through. And now these, this thread chain is gonna sit right in that little box for a few seconds until I get stitching. So that's how I bypass that with the thick threads. And particularly if you were working with say two eight weight threads in your machine, you would definitely want to um, bypass those threading ports. Let me come back to me for just a second. Are there any questions? I just want to, I've gone over a lot of stuff so far. So let me um, take some questions. Who has a question? You can unmute yourself and then just remute yourself when I answer. Daniela, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, I just was wondering, I have an 890. I don't have a chain looper um, that you were showing and a uh, I just was, I was wondering how is it different for the different machines? Oh, you, I'm going to show it on the 890. You might not have been here right at the very I wasn't. Beginning. I'm sorry. I'm, oh, I no, was, no, no. Was on the YouTube. no, no, that was my fault because we had that little glitchy thing on YouTube live. So no worries at all. You'll see the whole thing. I, I hit record. So we're good to oh, go. Perfect. <laughs> but you have the Bernina L890? Yes. You do yeah. have a chain looper because you can do cover chain stitch on that machine because I'm going to show that in just a few minutes, okay? I know I have one. I just didn't see how to thread it the way. I'll I show you that. on that. I'll, I'll okay. show you on that. I'll be happy. To Sorry. I, I, oh, no, that's I'll your fault. <laughs> so um, when I go back to um, the machine again, on any machine, typically when you thread the chain looper, not the upper and lower, but the chain looper, to start with, that thread stays under the bed of the machine. And you can just, let me go back and show you that again, just in case you couldn't see it before. We have Suzanne and Sydney. Hi, how are you? Come on in. So here are my um, ends of those three threads and they are under the bed of the machine. I'm gonna close up this left door. I have, um, I've unlocked my threading tubes before. So when I close up shop here, I'm ready to roll. And I would bring those thread ends up on my scrap fabric. I don't like to start right in on my actual project fabric only because 
in cover chain stitch mode, let me go back to me a second so you're not staring at nothing in particular. Um, in cover chain stitch mode, because those um, threads in the chain loop are, and this is even if you're just doing a hem with regular surgical cone thread, this goes, this isn't just for decorative techniques, this goes across the board. Um, you leave those thread chains when you've um, threaded your machine from the chain looper under the bed of the machine. So what happens is if you go right onto your actual project fabric without bringing those threads up to the top of the machine, sometimes they get tangled in between in the stitching itself. And it's sort of a pain that you're kind of picking them out. And sometimes you can pull on the stitch itself and we don't want that. So I always say, start and bring those thread tails up to the top of the machine on your scrap fabric or your starter fabric. And um, I always recommend any time on any brand or model machine, anytime you switch modes from say overlock to cover stitch or cover stitch back to overlock, definitely, definitely um, test it on your scrap fabric first, just to make sure you didn't forget to move anything around, that you've got everything in the right place. And I always say, um, with testing your stitching, you never have to rip anything out if it doesn't look right, because if it's just on scrap fabric, guess what? Fix what isn't right, and then you'll be good to go when you get to your actual project fabric. So um, no worries about that whatsoever. Um, so anyway, let me just show you exactly what I'm talking about with that. Um, Excuse me, I have a question. Okay, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, your threads, you were talking about using three embroidery threads. And when you threaded your machine, you said you were using 12, three 12 weight threads. Yeah, so I was showing the embroidery threads on the previous sample under the table machine, but now I'm using 12 weights just to show you that you can do that, but go ahead. Okay. Okay, that was my question. Is it 12 weight or is it embroidery thread? No, the ones on the machine that I'm stitching with, and let me just, I'll just stitch in just a minute. Those are 12 weight. I, I love wonderful threads. I don't yes. work for them or get a commission or anything else, but I love their threads because they are very strong. They stand up very nicely to serger um, tensions and speed also. I think for all the decorative stitching I've done with their threads, I've had one thread break ever. Um, but there are lots of good ones. Sulky makes good threads, Superior, Madeira. Um, there are tons of really nice threads. And one thing while we're talking about that, and I'm glad you asked that question, um, is... I always say all sergers are not created equal. Find the threads that your machine likes to use, okay? Because sometimes you might run into a thread that does not perform well on your particular machine. Now on the Baby Lock Triumph, Bernina L890, 860, 850. I have never come, and also on the Ovation, any of the, those um, Baby Locks, um, that are mid-range and up. I have never had a problem with the decorative threads. I, I've been able to use YLI, um, Wonderful, all the different threads. So those work very nicely on those machines. But sometimes you can run into a thread that for who knows why, your machine does not perform well with it. So switch the type of thread that you're using because the name of the game is really getting a beautiful finish for your stitching. You want it to come out nicely. So um, if you find that that thread doesn't work well, number one, you wanna make sure your needles are nice and fresh. I just put fresh needles in my machine last night. Um, use fresh needles, make sure everything is threaded correctly. Nothing is hung up anywhere along the line because that can happen sometimes, even if you're just using a single thread. Sometimes it's just caught somewhere. Um, with rayon threads, here is a tip that I suggest, whether it's a rayon embroidery thread or um, an eight or 12 weight embroidery thread. And let me show you, I have one right here. I suggest 
using a thread net. Um, rayon threads have a tendency to, when you put them on the spool pin, whether it's on your sewing machine or your serger, the rayon threads have a tendency to kind of slide down on the spool and they puddle and get caught under the spool. And that's when you can be surging along and all of a sudden your machine comes to a screeching halt and jams. And it's cause that thread is caught underneath. So I really recommend using a thread net with the rayon threads. It, there's nothing wrong with the thread at all. And it's really beautiful. It's got a beautiful sheen to it and it's wonderful stitched out, but it does have that tendency to fall down and kind of puddle under the, um, under the spool and that's when it can get hung up and caught. So a thread net will um, help you with that. And the way I use that is, let me just pull it out. I just take my thread net and put it right into the center hole of my spool. Oops, let me just get that in here, just like this. And then I bring it up and then I just pull it up just like a little cuff around it, and I let the thread come out from the top. But that will prevent any of the thread sliding and getting caught under the spool. So that's just a little tip on that. Yeah. What, is your, what is your opinion on the um, arrow flock? I've only used that a couple of times now. Is that kind of like a fuzzy, like a woolly poly or woolly? Nylon? Yes, it reminds you of filing. <clears throat> okay. Um, it's very, when I've used it and I've only used it a few times, it was very nice. It was very good. Yes. It's just yeah, a yeah. matter of how you like to use it and where you like to use it. Because I use all different threads and different weights of threads, depending on what I'm doing and you know, how, how I want the stitch to look when it's yes. finished. But yeah, the Aeroflock, I have, I have used that. And I do think it's kind of a similar yes. um, look to woolly poly or woolly nylon. I myself, while we're talking about that, prefer woolly poly simply yes. because um, it has a higher melting point. I always say the operative word in the um, name of woolly nylon is nylon and if you don't change the temperature on your iron to a cooler temperature and or put a press cloth over that if you have too high a temperature on your iron you will melt that and woolly nylon and woolly polyester are wonderful as is the aeroflock for um doing rolled hems on napkins yes. and it's great for baby clothes and yes. children's things because it's soft, it's fuzzy. Yes. And it also fills the edges of the fabric very nicely. So you get great coverage. Um, as it's stitching, it kind of stretches and pulls kind of skinny. And then when the stitch is formed and it relaxes, um, you get wonderful coverage on the edge of your fabric if that's what you're doing with it. But um, you can use that very successfully. It's a very nice thread. And now I've just let in a few other people and not to keep repeating myself, but I just want to reassure you, I am recording this whole thing from noontime on. I started at about five after. Um, so if you miss the beginning of this, feel free um, to watch the recording. It will be available free of charge on YouTube as are all of my surgery tip clips. So, and my YouTube channel, you know what? I should go. Well, I think you all know it if you're on here anyway, but it's youtube.com slash Gail Yellen, and that'll bring you to my channel. So, and also what I wanted to mention, and I'll mention it one more time before we finish, is um, with the um, Thread Fusion large and the universal size, um, as a thank you for watching this, whether you're watching the recording or right now, um, if you use the coupon code at checkout, all uppercase TF for Thread Fusion Live, L I V E, you will receive 10% off of um, your purchase, whether it's for the large or the universal size. So, um, do we have some more questions before I go back to the machine? Yes, Gail. Uh, this is Connie. Um, 
I wanted to ask you if you're, you said to stabilize the back of it. If you're yes. doing this on a garment, what would you use for a stabilizer? Not to, oh. if it's a knit, say, or I, are we going to woven? Excellent question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for asking that. Okay. Now I have found that um, on my sewing machine, when I do decorative stitching with a 12 weight thread in my um, needle um, or on my serger, if I'm working on a garment, a knit garment, or even a woven garment, I tested a gazillion different stabilizers. And I found that the best one to use is, um, number one, you can interface. If you want to use a, um, a medium to lightweight interfacing um, to fuse on, that's fine. But if you're not going to do that, what I suggest is a sticky wash away stabilizer. I found that the tearaways don't do the trick for this type of stitching. And I found that the washaways um, that are just the regular ones don't work as well either. The stitching needs the stability of that fusible wash away. The sticky wash aways are fantastic for so many different things. And the beauty of it too is that once you do wash it away, and it takes a little bit of rinsing time and all of that stuff because a lot of that is caught under dense stitching. So it does take a little bit of wash away. And I don't have my wrap me up that was done on gauze fabric, gauze, which is a woven, but super lightweight. I used a sticky wash away, did all kinds of decorative stitching on around the neckline and um, around the sleeve. And it came out absolutely perfect. And when I um, washed out that fu sticky fusible, it still looked great. So, but again, I, I can't emphasize enough, make a test sample to make sure that it's good. Do your stitching the way you want to do it. And on a knit, you may find that um, with your stitch length, um, because it is a knit, I uh, one thing that kind of bugs me, and it's just a me thing, um, it doesn't bother everybody, but I find that sometimes when people do um, embroideries or a lot of dense decorative stitching on knit fabrics, the stitching is so dense that if they have a motif going along, say the neckline or something like that, that beautiful drape of the knit fabric is gone and it ends up being kind of like cardboard. It's so stiff because of the thickness and density of the stitching. So that would be something I would say, test on your sample fabric to make sure that if that drape and that beautiful stretch in the knit is something that you want to maintain and keep the hand of the fabric the same, test those stitches and you may want to make a few different take some enough scrap fabric test it with different um settings with your stitch length and for the density of the stitch and maybe even the number of threads that you're using if you find um and this is kind of just like fine tuning stuff but if you find that using two or three 12 weight threads they might stitch out beautifully but it makes the fabric too stiff, then you know what? Switch over to lighter weight um, uh, threads that are in the same color family so that you'll get that same effect, but you won't change the hand of the fabric. Does that answer okay. your question? Yes, thank you, Gail. And yeah. can, can you mix two different weight threads? Can you Absolutely. use an eight weight and a yes. 12 weight? Yeah, what, are you, what machine are you using? Um, L890. Oh, okay. Yes. I have used um, 12 weights as well as eight weights together very successfully. Yes, you definitely can. But okay. while we're talking about mixing threads and weights of threads, another thing that I like to mention um, in these Zoom classes is don't ask your machine to do more than it can do. If when you start stitching, if you try to do three eight weight threads, I would not do that. It's it's a lot, a lot of thread. It's very dense. It's very heavy. If you feel like 
any machine, whether you have a Janome, a Viking, Baby Lock, Bernina, whatever, Faf, um, if you feel as though the machine is straining and chugging, then take one of the threads out or change it out for a lighter weight thread. Don't I don't want anyone to overwork their machines. Um, that is something that's really important. Now, the baby locks are very strong. Um, the Triumph is, the uh, Bernina L890 has a DC motor in it. I haven't had any problems at all with that. But again, would I put three eight-weight threads in the looper? I don't think so. No, I think it's too much. And also I think it would make, I think it would just glob up the um, uh, the stitch too much. But two eight weight threads, absolutely. Let me just go back here and show you what that looks like. I have one on a um, batik fabric. So, um, but, okay. okay. So here is what I call my chunky chain stitching. These are, two actually they almost look like i think they're two 12 weights and an eight weight thread in the chain looper and i think this one is just um i'm just looking to see i think this one is a 12 weight and an eight weight in the chain looper. But the thing that i love about using these heavier decorative threads for this type of stitching is that the stitch sits right on top of the fabric. It's very dimensional and pretty. Let me just show you this one too. I think this one is just beautiful. This is a narrow cover stitch. And I'm just looking at the ends of this. I think this is one, two, three 12 weight threads in my chain looper. And uh, my machine handled that beautifully. And then I did some more of the chunky chain stitching over here. And that was with two eight weight threads. I can just see the colors right on the um, end of the stitching. And that thin thread is my needle thread. That's a serger cone thread. So um, now you've seen that on the baby lock. And I want to switch over to the um, Bernina L890 and show you how that performs on that. But before we do that, who else has a question? Anyone else question about their machine, about the threading, anything else? I think this is this is great. I'm very excited about this. And you're asking fantastic questions. And there are no silly questions, believe me. Um, and sometimes if a question jogs my brain about, oh, I should mention this or that. So please feel free to jump in with a question. All right. I do have another question. Okay. And the question is about um, the threads. Can can you show us a picture of, uh, of um, embroidery thread, three embroidery threads and that stitch? Um, actually, yes, I, um, you might not have been here. I had, um, well, here's the overlock with that, but I can pop some on, I will put that on the Bernina L890. Let me go back to my, um, table shot again. This is a three thread wide overlock stitch on the edge of this. And this one has four it, machine embroidery weight threads in the upper looper. So do you see all the different colors that show? And just to show you that I know it is four different threads, here's the end of the stitching. And I think I did that on purpose so that I would remember how many threads I used. There is, <clears throat> excuse me, there is that marine blue. There's a um, kind of a, a teal color, a hot pink and a lavender on there. Let me see if I can get them on the fabric itself because it's impossible to see on the gray. There, here they are. One, two, three, four, can you see them? And then the other thread that you see is the needle thread. 
So, but that there are your four embroidery away threads, but I do have embroidery away threads here. So let me change out my machine. And did you want to see the cover stitch with the embroidery threads? Is that what you were asking to see? Yes, please. Yes. Okay, sure. Yep. Okay. So um, this is just going to take me a minute. I've got to put this machine down and switch it over. As I say, I should have... I should have one of those belts like in the grocery store where I can hit it and move one machine off to the side and then bring the next one in. However, I don't. So give me just a minute. If you want to run and grab something to drink or eat or anything else or uh, use the ladies room, this will just take me a minute to get set up. So feel free to uh, go ahead and do that. It's exactly one o'clock my time, Eastern time. So um, I can see you back here in probably it'll it'll probably give me about five minutes okay so go ahead and do what you have to do i'm going to shut this machine off and move it out of my way and then um we'll be ready to roll and i will show you the embroidery weight threads in the chain looper so this is going to be this down i think I'll use these same colors in my needle. I'm just talking to myself. So get this. And again, I just saw that somebody came into um, the Zoom and thank you for joining us. Um, if you missed that first hour, no worries at all. You will um, see the recording. So you'll have all that information. But again, um, if you want to purchase the Thread Fusion, the 10% off discount code is all uppercase TF for Thread Fusion, live, L-I-V-E. Okay, so now I am switching out my machines. These out of the way. And I'll bring in my 890. I'll get my chair out of the way too. I am good. I'm going to put this right down over here. Get that foot control out of the way so that I'm using the correct one for my machine. Put that over here. Okay, and you let in Desiree. Hi, Desiree. I just saw you come in. Yeah, I'm just switching out with my machine. I had the um, Triumph, and now I am moving in with my Bernina. L890. I'll put it in here, make sure I've got the right cords. Yep. Okay, good. Alrighty. So um I think I'll change out these threads too. I'm gonna put those same colors on that I had before. my sewing machine back where it was originally as well. These suction cups work extraordinarily well as you can hear. Um, let me get this off. And I am going to set up my machine. Now, this is a great example of how you can use the large size with these mini kings of thread. They fit very nicely on this thread fusion stand. Okay, so here are my four mini kings. These are embroidery, machine embroidery weight threads. 
I'm putting these on my chain reaper spool pin on the back of the machine. These surgical cone threads in my needles. Dale, can we ask one more question? And yes, we'll allow that. There's no extra charge. Absolutely. <laughs> Jump right in. I'm happy to answer questions. Well, it's Heather from Kansas City again, so <laughs> I'm probably bothering you again. No, you're I, not. Not at all. I was curious. I missed the part about you have a two sizes. What do you ask yourself when deciding which size is the right one for your? Um, well, one of them, um, did you see both sizes before? No, this is the first time I'm actually seeing you set it up. I was I was in the wrong place at the right time. <laughs> no, you you were you were in the right place that I couldn't get to work. I had a glitch with my cameras and it was doing all sorts of weird things. So um okay, so let me show you that real quick, Heather. Um, I'm just gonna clip my threads from what I used before so I can show you that on the um I don't want to disturb you know if you're on a time to try to get this set no. up I just that's fine that's it's fascinating no 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 I'll show you real quick hang on so let me just wrap these up and get them out of the this is this is the thread fusion stand that I just had on the um baby lock triumph um but you're asking what are the considerations for which one to choose. Now, this one, um, the large one is, um, it will nest between your spool pins. I'm gonna go to that machine shot or that table shot so that you can see this, Heather. Okay, so let me, where did I put my, oh, okay, so, here is, let me get this out of the way. Here is the large one. And this will comfortably fit four mini kings, which is what I have on the machine right now. And it has the four, um, well, this is kind of, hang on, I had this down low to see the stitching. You don't need it quite that low. It has the four non-skid rubber feet. But because we have these um, concave cutouts, on this um this is four inches from wide side to wide side on here and um because we have these cutouts it will nest very easily on any position spool pin and this will easily fit four mini kings which is what i have on and i'm going to show one of the ladies asked to see machine embroidery weight thread in cover stitch mode. So I'm going to demo that on the 890. But um, this will easily fit those four mini king spools of thread. Actually, wait a minute. I've got some of the decorative. Um, my, my Christmassy thread. Hang on. I'll show it. There we go. So here it is with the four mini kings. Easily fits on that. Now, I would say here is the the universal size right here. Uh, I think somebody had wanted to come in. Are we all good? I think so. Okay, we have the universal size that has a slightly larger hole that will sit. Heather, which machine do you have? I have the L890. Okay, so this one is slightly smaller and for stability, we put a rubber ring on this one and that will hold it whether or not you have straight spool pins like on the Bernina L890. This is perfectly stable even with the bigger hole because of this rubber ring. It's perfectly fine. But it's a matter of how large a machine you have, um, what your favorite types of threads are to use and... Um, so there are a few different considerations on that. And um, so that's kind of up to you how you want to do that um, as far as the size goes. So, um, but either one works nicely. I would say on the universal size, you can comfortably get maybe two to three mini kings along with um say two of the smaller spools of thread, it will accommodate that very easily. 
and remain stable. It'll be fine. Um, but if you want something larger that you use the uh, bigger cones of thread for decorative stitching a lot, you might want to look at the large. Does that answer your question? I think so. So if you had like that spaghetti um, uh, that weight, I can't remember if it's, is it eight weight? Uh, the oh. spaghetti is an Egyptian cotton 12 weight by Wonderfell. 12, 12 weight. weight. Yeah. So the, the, the large size would be fine for that? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Okay. So okay, thanks. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 okay. no, no. I'm glad you asked. I'm, I'm happy to answer. Nobody has to apologize because keep that... going. I, this is really interesting. I'm very, very interested. Okay. In... I am going to switch my camera over now. Um, let me see if I can pull, you know what? I should have kept this on my face just so that nobody gets seasick. Hang on a second. Um, I'm going to try to bring my camera up again. I do have other cameras and one of them was the one that was giving me the issue before. So that's why I'm a little bit reluctant to use it for this presentation. But let me see if this is showing what we wanted to show. Let me make sure this is nice and tight. And that this is nice and tight, I think. I want to be able to show you the back. You're looking at my camera right here. That's going to be on the machine. Hold on just a second. And let me, I want to be able to show the back side so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to switch the camera. Okay. All right. Now you're just seeing the left top side. So let me bring this over. Um, and show you the stand. Straighten this out and see if. Okay, so there are my four mini king spools of embroidery weight thread. They are on the um, chain looper spool pin. But just to show you what I was talking about with those cutouts. Let me hold this just like this. Let me pull this up. You can see that I could even put this, and I have done this with using embroidery weight threads in my needle, multiple ones. And because of those cutouts, I still have lots of um, elbow room between the cone on the next spool pin and the thread stand, the thread fusion stand. So let me just migrate this one back to where I want it on the chain looper. Okay, very good. And I'm going to get this threaded up and hopefully you'll be able to see it. Um, I am doing the same thing. I'm going to use a thread cradle because I want to bring all four machine embroidery weight threads yeah. um, I'm going to bring all four of those through the chain looper simultaneously there's two here is a teal here's three now because these are lightweight do I need to have a super long stitch probably not um, but again, how do I know that? I'm going to test. And when you've been in any of my surge or Zoom classes or taken any in person at dealers or ASG events, I'm like the broken record about testing everything. So I'm clicking this into my chain looper pretension area right here. That's my lavender threading loop. And I'm going to use my same... Um, thread cradle. I'm going to bring my camera down. Look away if this kind of makes you seasick. I'm going to shut my light off here for just a second because it kind of glares sometimes. Okay, that's better, I think. Let me bring it down. 
hard to. I need a full time camera person here, I think. Give me a second. Let me make sure that stays put. Okay, that's not bad. Now, we are working on the Bernina L890. And I have myself set up for a narrow cover stitch, the same stitch that I had on the triumph. Here are my four embroidery weight threads. I'm going to go through the lavender threading port because that's the chain looper threading port. And I'm going to use the exact same thread cradle that I used before. I'm going to lock my threading tube. And um, my air threading on this machine is um, activated with the um, foot control. So there's not a button to push. So I step on the foot control, that buzzing you hear, they always call that the Bernina burr. So I'm going to put this through. I'm going to hover it over the threading port. And now it's coming through the chain looper, which I don't know that you can see that well, but I'm going to move the camera over and down a little bit. Let me bring it down. And I'm going to put that out light back on. And I'm going to turn the machine. Oh, actually, I think you can pretty well see it. But let me just give it a little bit more light. And I'm going to lighten up the exposure. That might help also. Okay. So here is the end of my thread cradle. It's through the eye of the upper looper. This machine doesn't have that little box on the side where the thread sits when you thread it. But because these are lightweight, can I just put these right through the um, looper tubes? Absolutely. Yes. So I'm going to give those a little haircut to make sure they're all even with each other. I'm going to pull plenty of slack because something to be aware of is that the chain looper threading port is as far right on the machine as it can be. And your chain looper is the one that is the farthest left under the bed of the machine. So you need a few extra inches for the threads to travel through. And I'm, I have my lasso or my loop right here, and I'm putting my four embroidery weight threads through. I am pulling the other end of this right through. And I think I just lost them. Hang on a second. Let me do that one more time. And that does happen sometimes. It's not, it's not you, it's the thread. Oh, let's see what I did. Okay. So. I forgot to get out of the settings mode for my turning on my light. Okay, good. Okay, so let me just pull a little bit longer thread. And make sure this goes through this time. Yeah, here we are. So can you see them all coming out here? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now I'm going to cut some of this off. I cut a little bit. I brought in a little bit extra long. Usually you're going to leave about a three or four inch tail, about a four inch tail really. Um, in there. <clears throat> I'm going to unlock my threading tubes. I have to thread my um, center and right cover stitch needles. So I'm going to do that. And you know, while we're looking also at this, let me let in this person. Let me um, 
go back up here for just a second. This is just a little surgery essentials information. I'm gonna lower that exposure. It's way too bright up here. Here. Okay. Okay. So um, when you're in cover chain stitch mode, you're using the guides that are above the chain cover needles. The recessed ones that are farther back here are your overlock needles. So many times on combo machines, I see people um, putting their threads in um, the wrong guide for that. So just be sure to... Um, get them in the correct one. So this one is for my left needle. And I've got the clear foot on so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, and when I'm doing decorative stitching like this, if I'm following a line that I've drawn on the wrong side of the fabric, I need that clear foot. You can also um, I talked about <clears throat> lightening your presser foot pressure before. Um, if you're doing curvy lines, you might want to pop on your curved foot, which is a little bit shorter, lighten the presser foot pressure, and that will let you steer the fabric more easily. But um, one tip on that as well is don't make any sudden jerky moves with your fabric as you're steering it. I always say think in terms of nice gentle curves um, because if you turn your fabric too hard or too fast, I guarantee you're going to get some skip stitches or some funky looking stitches. Okay, so I've got my threads in my chain looper. My needles are threaded. I'm going to follow my own advice and I'm just going to um, use a piece of scrap fabric to um, get the uh, chain looper threads up to the top with this. And this is with the four embroidery weight threads. This is what the request was. So that's the Bernina book that you hear, it's just getting ready. And I have my stitch length on 3.5, which for such lightweight threads might be a little bit long, but let's look at it from the top. I don't have my knee lift in because um, I need the space for all my cameras and everything. So I took it out. That's my locking tool. I cut my needle threads. This will lock the stitch when I pull it out. And... Oh, it looks pretty nice actually at this length, but I could probably shorten it up. Let me put it under the camera so that you can see. And these, again, four embroidery weight threads. Look how pretty. Let me bring that down. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that stunning? Oh. And see, this Gorgeous. is... Yeah, and now that's four. Wait a minute, I'm going to brighten this up. Depending on the fabric and the thread, sometimes you need to brighten it up. Look how beautiful that is with four embroidery weight threads. Now, you know, if I wanted to really push the envelope a little bit, I could um, probably pop a fifth one in on a different spool pin and do that but that's because they are embroidery weight threads would i try to put four uh, or five eight weight threads absolutely not but two eight weight threads definitely but you see the difference between that with thread blending versus this where you see the little blocks of color which again they're pretty but i think this is so subtle and beautiful it's really nice and different it looks like colors. a watercolor. It does, doesn't it? It's really, really pretty. And these are not rayon threads. These are polyester. I think they are Floriani threads. Yes, they are. Um, and those stand up very nicely. If I were using rayon um, embroidery, or excuse me, if I were using embroidery weight threads in my serger, honestly, I would be more inclined to go with polyester only because the rayon embroidery weight threads are a little bit, they're more fragile than um, 
they're more fragile than the polyester. Polyester threads are much stronger. If you have a rayon thread and you really, really, really want to use it, then definitely go and put it in your machine. But my advice would be slow down your stitching speed because again, the rayon thread has more of a tendency to snap and break easily. Um, it You can definitely use it, but slow down your stitching speed. Does that make sense for everybody? Okay. Yes, thank you. Yep. And so there are those four mini king spools on the um, large size thread fusion. And um, they fit nicely. They travel nicely. And they all sit independent of each other. So nothing gets tangled or caught, which is really important. But while I'm thinking about that, I have one other thing to tell you um, is that when I was doing, um, and I didn't bring it down with me into the studio, but I do have it. Um, my little crossbody bag, you might have seen it on um, Instagram or uh, even on my Pinterest board under patterns. Um, I had a black velveteen bag and I wanted to kind of give it that Chanel effect with the um, quilting in the diamond shapes. So what I did was I used two 12 weight um, silver threads and then to make it a little more sparkly, I used a metallic embroidery thread and the metallic embroidery threads are really beautiful, but they can be a little bit temperamental. Um, you know yourself when you're embroidering with them on your sewing machine or just doing decorative stitching, you really have to slow down your stitching and be really careful. Well, what I found with that was the two 12 weights went through just fine on the thread fusion, but that metallic embroidery thread, when I had it on the thread fusion, it had a tendency to kind of get coiled and tangled around the other threads. So what I did was I put that on a different spool pin and it was perfectly fine. But that was the exception to the rule. And it was because it was a metallic embroidery thread. So um, that was my experience with that. So I want you to all be successful with it. So I'm, I'm telling you all of the things that I have had happen that I didn't want to happen, but... They do, and we all learn from that. So um, any other questions as we go along? Anything else? I'm, I'm so excited. Still, oh, yeah. This is off the hand, but yep. have you ever used like the glow in the dark thread? You know, I just got some. I ordered some and it just came the other day. I have not had a chance to use it. I mentioned at the beginning, my brother and his wife are visiting from North Carolina. So um rather than spending all my time in the studio while they're here, I, I did want to visit with them for a few minutes here and there. Um, but I um, I just got it in the mail uh, a couple of days ago. So I haven't had a chance to use it, but I'm going to definitely try it. Um, if I have time today, maybe even I'll, I'll try it out. But I can't I mean, wait to see that. <laughs> well, you... I've embroidered with it and I have to slow down my speed and I have to <laughs> thread funny. So I just was hoping to... If you tried it, what tricks did you use? <laughs> well, if I um, if I have any suggestions for using it on my sewing machine or serger, has anyone else used it? Let me put it like that. We have a wonderful sewing community here with lots of information. Has anyone else used it? No. no. Um, okay, so that. Um, that's a great question. So when I do try it out, I'll definitely post something about it. Um, I was curious to say, I think I got it in two different colors. I think I got the orange and that kind of lime green. Um, and I know Wonderful also makes another thread that's kind of good for safety. Like if you like to run or you're doing anything in the dark, that's reflective thread. It's not glow in the dark, but when light hits it, it glows. It's kind of like the lines on the highway and stop signs now use it. Everything uses it where it's um, a reflective chemical 
that um, is very good. So that's great. Like if you like to walk your dog after dark and you want to put it on a leash or the dog's bandana or on you on um, a garment, certainly you could stitch with that and um, easily be seen. Gail? Oscar after dark. Yes. I have a question. I'm brand new to this, um, but I'm, I just ordered uh, the thread fusion for my dealer. So I'm going to try it out later today. Okay. So are there any don'ts? I hear a lot of do's. Are there any don'ts you can say? Uh, yes. Um, what I was saying is don't ask your machine to do more than it can do. What kind of, what machine are you working on? I have the Bernina L90. Okay, the L890. Okay, so as I said, would I use three eight weight threads in the chain looper? No, I think three eight weights is overdoing it. Would I use three 12 weights? Yes, I would. I'd go down to two eight weights in the chain looper, and I showed that with the chunky chain stitching before. But my don'ts are um, don't ask your machine to do more than it can do. Um, if whatever brand you have or whatever model machine you have, you can get some good stitching on it, but find the threads that work well and the weights that work well also on your machine. But basically it's really pretty free form. Um, I test things all the time and if it works well, fantastic. I go with it. If it doesn't work um, with heavier weight threads, if you find that your fabric is, as I said earlier before, if it's not advancing under the foot the way it should for the stitch length that you have, then stop and lengthen that stitch and also help the fabric along when it's starting to get stitch. And that's whether you're in overlock or cover chain stitch mode. Anytime you're using heavier weight threads, a lot of times you wanna hold those thread chains from the back of the presser foot, from behind the presser foot and help it get going. And then once it takes a few stitches in the fabric, you can let go and let it go on its way. But my biggest don't is with decorative threads and using multiple th threads in one looper is don't ask your machine to do more than it can do comfortably. Um, if your machine feels like it's chugging and straining, back off, stop, lighten the load. What about um, using different weights on like in the needle versus the loopers? Okay, yes, absolutely, you can do that. I use a top stitch needle. In fact, would you like to see it? Okay. Um, now this would be, I could use, and on that um, three thread overlock that I showed you on the fabric before, I used um, multiple threads in my, I used four embroidery weight threads in the upper looper. Now in the needle, um, let me think. I use, I'm going to do the same four threads, but with a top stitch needle. And can you use a top stitch needle in overlock mode? Absolutely, you can. Um, a top stitch needle is a, a needle that has a deeper groove along the shaft of the needle that will accommodate heavier weight threads. And the bigger eye in the top stitch needle allows you, number one, to be able to thread those through the eye, but also it will accommodate that thicker, heavier thread in the eye. Because um, if you've ever had a chance to see Rhonda Pierce from Schmetz Needles do a seminar, she does them at expos and different things, um, take her class. She is a wealth of knowledge. She's a national spokesperson for Schmetz Needles. Did and you say her name one more time? Rhonda, R-H-O-N-D-A. And her last name is Pierce, P-I-E-R-C-E. -E. Um, and she also does different um, Facebook lives and things like that for Schmetz Needles too. And she's delightful. She's lovely um, and she's wonderful and a lot of fun too. But she is most importantly, a wealth of knowledge. Like, And um, speaking of Schmetz Needles, they have a free app that you can put on your phone, your tablet, your Android device. 
um, that is just loaded with information on their needles. And, you know, it would go across the board for other brands as well. But um, change your needles. Don't try to use a worn out needle. And while I'm talking, pardon me while I turn away, but I'm going to um, change out my machine for overlock mode. And let me just find where I put my... I'm going to just pull these out of my machine. I'm pulling these out of the chain looper. And I am going to switch these four threads over to my needle position. I just need to find what is my knife guard and my trim bin. These, I didn't, I didn't vacuum these. Don't tell anybody. They're not super clean. I'm using black thread and they look yucky. So don't tell anybody that you saw them. I'm going to take these threads out. And it's always a good idea to cut your threads and pull them out in the same direction as they stitch. It's not a great idea to pull them backwards through those um, tension discs, only because it tends to create a buildup of lint in the um, tension disc, in between the tension discs. I'm taking out my ELX705 needles, which is the only needle I use in cover chain stitch mode. And one thing I love about Schmidt's needles is they have those color-coded bands on their needles. And um, they make it very easy to readily identify. Like I could see the turquoise band on this one and it was a gently used needle. And I'm going to pop that in and I'm putting this in my left overlock. What I'm going to do is I am going to show you a two, well, it's called a two thread reverse <laughs> lock. And typically you'd only have one heavier weight thread in your left overlock needle. I'm going to switch my machine out to stitch number nine. No, I'm not. That's not the one that I wanted. Let me just see. I think this is stitch number 11. Gail? Yes? Do you ever use the decorative thread um, guide on the top of the L890? Um, oh, I know. You're talking about that little metal, the little wire thing? Yes. No, I honestly don't, only because I have the thread fusion stand, so I don't really need that, and I have not had a problem with that. Don't tell the people at Bernina I said that, but I don't use it, honestly. Okay. But if you want to try it, there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's, it's a good little device, but I have not had any issues with doing that. Uh, or without using it, let me put it like that. Okay, so now I am gonna take these four threads, embroidery weight threads that I had in my chain looper, and I'm gonna switch them over to go through my left overlock needle position. I'm bringing them up here. And doing this, my goodness, I've got a ton of thread here. Let me cut some of this off. Maybe it's like Rapunzel with the mic. So, Gail, basically what you're saying is that the machine can do pretty much whatever we ask it. It's just what the stitch is going to look like and, exactly. and what we like, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And, um, you know, earlier when I showed the Triumph, that's got a nice strong motor. The L890 serger, the Bernina serger, has a DC motor, so it's strong as an ox, and um, okay. it will carry those threads nicely. Okay, so let me take off one of my serger cone threads and get this, and this will be a nice little wrap-up. I'm glad you asked. So I am doing what is technically a two-thread reverse flat lock where my decorative thread, if I was using a 12 weight thread, I would have one thread going through my top stitch needle. Um, 
somebody asked about, can I do multiple threads in there? Yes, I would use embroidery weight threads from multiple threads in the needle simply because the other thing is also that with the, even though the top stitch needle has that bigger eye, it's, it's not that huge. It will accommodate, say, four embroidery weight threads. Will you be able to pull two 12 weights through? Uh-uh, no, it won't. So um, if you want to use multiple threads, use a lighter weight one. So let me get my outline out of the way. I'm putting serger cone thread in my lower looper. I'm turning, I'm locking my threading tubes. I have to also put my um, upper looper converter on. Okay, so this is through my lower looper. Okay. And um, let me just show you what I'm doing here. So that in case you've never done a two thread stitch and you're not sure how to set up your machine. Okay, so let me tilt my camera a little bit. Um, yeah. It's so cute, I can hardly move it. Oh, here we go. Okay. All right. So let me tighten that up again. I'm going to try to bring this in a little bit closer and get my outline in there for better lighting. And let me lighten this up. I still have somebody coming in. Um, I'm gonna lighten up my exposure again so you can see inside the machine better. Okay, so here is my upper looper. Now, I am not gonna have any thread in there because I am doing a two thread reverse flat lock. But technically, I've got four threads in my needle that are going to be stitched out as one thread. So I need to close the eye on the upper looper since there's no thread in here. So um, on your baby lock, this is called the subsidiary looper. Um, on the Bernina, it's the upper looper converter. And they use that name in a few different brands as well. They're the exact same thing. They just call them a different name. So I turn that over. I gently click to make sure this little prong that you can see, I think I'm too bright now. There it is. You can just see that little prong very easy. You know, it's, it's small. I'm just going to gently push back and you can feel and hear it click in and close the eye of that upper looper. When you don't have any thread in your upper looper with this, you need to have this on. And there are times if I'm in a hurry and I'm setting up for a two thread reverse flat lock, which is absolutely one of my favorite stitches to do decoratively. Um, and I forget to put this on. When I chain off, guess what? No stitch because I need this on to close that eye. And it also helps carry the lower looper thread that normally thread in the upper looper would do. Now I am threading my left overlock needle, but I've got four threads together. So here's another way to use a little mini thread cradle. I'm just cutting a piece of thread and I cut it a little shorter because I'm only going through the eye of the needle. It doesn't have to travel. I'm going to put it in the all four of them in the guide for the left overlock needle. So that's in. I've got that big eye on the needle, top stitch needle. And I'm going to thread the cut end of this. And I you're probably just seeing the back of my hand. I'm going to put these through the eye of the needle. I'm trying to work around my camera a little bit. So I don't have a lot of visual access. Hang on a second. Okay, so the two cut ends are going through. And here's my lasso. Can you see that? Let me lower this exposure. 
Oh, you know what? Let me shut this light off too. There. Okay, good. Is that good? Okay. Yes. Much less glare. Okay, so then let me brighten this up just a touch. Okay, so here's my lasso. I'm going to bring my four embroidery threads in. Make sure those are in that thread guide above the needle. I'm going to take those, put them through my thread cradle loop right here, and I'm going to pull all of them through the eye of that top stitch needle. See, they all fit very nicely. So I've got those four embroidery weight threads in my left overlock needle just to go over this. This is a two thread um, reverse flat lock. So I'm going to pull those through. I'm going to bring my knife. I'm going to activate that again. You don't have that activated. Now, this machine, this is what I'm talking about. It's kind of dirty. I wasn't thinking about doing this, but I'm happy to show it. I'm going to unlock my um, threading tube. I'm going to pop on my seam guide to do this. This will fit right on the top of the machine. And I'm going to line it up so that the edges of my fabric go right along here. And I'm going to brighten that up just a smidge. Now, I have on this machine a nine millimeter wide stitch. Um, on the baby lock, the maximum width on your overlock stitch is 7.5 millimeters. So I'm going to bring mine up to nine. But also on, um, on this machine, you have an MTC dial right where my fingernail is. I'm turning that up to plus two because that's going to give me a scooch more thread that comes out of the uh, looper to loosen up that stitch. Also, um, this machine will also auto set my tensions, but guess what? I like my tensions a little bit different. So instead of the default setting, I'm going to bring my left needle tension down to one. I'm going to crank up my lower looper tension way up high to nine. And let's see how that looks. Now, I will tell you, the machine is going to sound louder. And I have a microphone that's in these um, cameras. So it's right next to the machine. So it's going to really sound clacky with that. But these are pretty quiet machines, believe me. I'm going to put my press her foot down and I want to stitch off just to make sure I didn't forget the setup on any of these. I want to make sure I've got a stitch. Yep. Yeah. And you'll see me holding on to that thread chain from the back so that it doesn't get built up on the, um, on the stitch finger. So I've got two pieces of dark green fabric right here. And I am putting them right sides together. Now, the way you position your fabric for a flat lock stitch depends on your machine. I can put mine over so that my knife trims off a little bit of the edge. A lot of machines have you move the fabric off to the left a little bit so that your loops hang off the edge and then you can pull the stitch flat. So you will want to check your owner's manuals on that. But I'm going to bring mine over so that the knife trims off a little bit. And I'm going to get it right under the fabric or under the presser foot. I am holding onto my thread chain from the back till my needle bites into the fabric and starts stitching. My stitch length is on 2.5. I'm leaving my differential feed on one because this is a stable woven fabric. So no need to change that. Okay, now I can let go of that thread chain. Okay, now let me cut that and I'm going to go over to the um, the table camera. I'm cutting my thread tails. 
pardon my coughing. I'm getting over the tail end of a cold and I still have a little bit of a cough and I forgot to bring water with me. So, okay, so let me go. <clears throat> okay, so here, let's take a look at the stitch first. Here is my lower looper thread. That's just serge or cone thread. Look at how pretty this looks on this side. This is my four embroidery weight threads in the needle. Let me open this up. And I say this in class all the time, no matter how many times I do this, I love it. <laughs> Look at how gorgeous. That's with four. Oh, yeah. Isn't that so, so pretty? And you can pull that. See that nine millimeter oh. stitch? <laughs> is just absolutely beautiful. Let me lower that um, exposure because I think it's kind of blown out looking. There you go. Beautiful. Isn't that stunning? So yes. that's with four embroidery weight threads in a top stitch needle in overlock mode. Would I do that in cover chain stitch mode? No, it's the chain looper that gives me that decorative looking stitch. Okay. two pieces of fabric sewn together yep they are attached a flat lock stitch is a very beautiful decorative stitch but it is also a construction stitch and um now when you buy athletic wear like running uh, shorts or pants or any kind of athleisure wear um you will see that they are often seamed with a flat lock stitch. Now, one thing I like to say to people, let me go back to me for a second, because I have people ask me this all the time. Can you use a flat lock stitch, like a three thread flat lock stitch to seam a skirt or other things? Yes, you can. It is a pretty strong stitch. I would do a shorter stitch length, definitely. But, um, and I, I wouldn't be using embroidery thread for construction, but um, the stitch that you see on ready to wear athletic wear, as well as athleisure wear, that is a um, industrial flat lock stitch. They use six threads. Can you do that on a home domestic machine? No, you can't but you can still use this particular stitch or a three thread overlock for seaming. And it's pretty darn strong. The reason a flat lock stitch is used in athletic wear is because it locks the seam under the stitch. Let me go back and show you the flip side now that I've opened this up. Here we are for the decorative side. There are my four embroidery threads from the needle. Here is the wrong side. Do you see how the seam allowance is locked underneath those stitches? Why is that good for athletic wear? Well, who wants to run a 26 mile marathon and have the seams chafing their legs? That seam allowance can't chafe because the edges of the seam are not free the way they are when you use your sewing machine or a regular overlock stitch where that seam allowance is open and free. Um, this is locked in, so it really prevents chafing on that. But that's just a little bit of side information on your stitch selection. But you can see it's just absolutely stunning. And that's with the four embroidery threads in your top stitch needle. But before we close out, who else has more questions? Hi, Gail. Hey. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. This is Joyce. Hi, Joyce. I'm glad to see you finally. I've talked to you a few times about your um, thread fusion a long time ago. Okay. Um, where we're trying to figure out uh, how to work that. I'm so glad you did. <laughs> yes, we did. We got it. And um, as I say, we have the two sizes, both work well. Um, it's a matter of what size you want to purchase. And um, if, or if you have a, a smaller profile on your machine that you might want to use the universal size, but um, because the large has those concave cutouts. Let me go back to 
the machine again. Did you ever question Joyce? I well, in on you. I, I was just going to um, ask you about what you're showing there. There are two sizes available, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, so let's go back to this for a good wind up. Here is, let me pull up my camera a little bit higher. So it's, you have a little- I missed the beginning of your- Oh yes, and this is recorded, Joyce. So no worries. Okay. Here is the large size. And this is four inches from side to side on these. It has the four non-skid rubber feet on the bottom. The base <clears throat> is solid. The pins unscrew to pack flat. Okay. Okay. And this is great. And the reason we did these concave cutouts is so that this will nest on any spool pin on your machine. And all you have to think about is really the distance between the center hole to the edge. And I'm just looking from where I popped my ruler but i see i have a ruler on this and i can tell you that from he from the center of the spool um pin ho uh, holder the thread fusion holder to the inside of that concavity is an inch and a half exactly so and if i wanted to use the um smaller spools on that i could do it right oh absolutely you can use oh. Any size spool you want, just because it's a larger one, I use small spools on this all the time of my 12 weight threads. Oh, definitely. Okay. Well, and, I have the Triumph. Okay. Now, so I think it would be, um, you know, it would be good to buy the larger one. <laughs> right. And uh, what I showed earlier on the Triumph, I'm going to go back to my face because I can just grab um, these. I'm not going to put the machine back up, but. Um, let me just go back to show you this. If you missed the beginning of this, what I said was on the Triumph, your spool pins have that flare at the base of them. So you can, in your um, accessory bags. I do have those. Yes. I call them serger coasters. They call them the large spool discs. I take one or two of those, put them on the spool pin, and that acts like a little platform and you can put the large right on that. And that's what I used at the beginning of this um, Zoom class for that. And it's perfectly stable. It, it doesn't wiggle around at all. And um, it holds it very stable. You, so you can use that on your Triumph. You could use it on Novation. I think you can also use it on some of the... Um, I, I always forget the names that they, they changed all the names. It was the one that's equivalent to the evolution, um, which is a smaller profile throat plate. And, um, but you can use this on that, but then you also have the universal size with this slightly larger hole. And when you go back and watch the beginning of this recording, you'll see that the larger hole will slide all the way over that, um, flared part of the spool pin on the baby lock sergers okay and, thank you. but you could also use this on other machines any other brand of machine that has the straight spool pins like my l890 does because the rubber ring on the bottom on the bottom of the base will keep it from sliding but you up. wouldn't use this on a sewing machine this is just um actually yeah can. you could you could use this with multiple embroidery threads on your sewing machine um just the way i showed you with this last one um i would use i have used um i wouldn't do multiple 12 weights on a sewing machine that i would okay. not do um because it's too much thread for your sewing machine and you'd never get the tension right with your bobbin i think all you'd end up with is a big thread nest under your foot but um, you could definitely use multiple embroidery weight threads with decorative stitching or even straight stitching. It's really beautiful. Because I do a lot of embroidery. And also, um, I have in the hopper um, some uses using quilting 
And also um, with embroidery, this is kind of fun to do if you have a regular machine like the one in back of me, um, not a multi-needle machine where you have all the space mm -hmm. to set up your threads. But with the thread fusion, you could have four of your threads um, that are, you know, in succession and have them right there. So you don't have to keep jumping up to change threads. You'd have oh, four ready to go. Yeah. So um, you can use it with that. But would I use multiple heavyweight threads? I would not even use an eight weight thread on my sewing machine. It's just too heavy for too them. heavy. Yeah. But um, I've used 12, a single 12 weight very successfully with a top stitch needle on my sewing machine. Um, a lot of times with decorative stitching, which I mentioned my wrap me up with the gauze um, fabric. Um, and I think you can see a picture of that if you go to gailpatrice.com and then go to my store. Okay. Um, you'll see the wrap me up. And the turquoise one is that lightweight. It's a single gauze. And I use the sticky wash away stabilizer, 12 weight thread for bold stitching. But when you're on your sewing machine, what you're going to want to do is um, lengthen your stitch and you'll have to play around with your tension a little bit on the needle thread because of that heavier thread. Okay, I have that pattern. Oh, okay, that yeah. Brought me up. Yeah, I just wanted to mention real quick um, that I listened to by accident, actually Thread Talk. Uh -huh. have, you, have you seen that by I Wonderful? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yes. they have some good uh, good tips on yes. metallic thread. Yes. Gail? Yeah. Yes. Can you tell me how much does the, the thread fusion, the large, how much does it weigh? And what is the base made of? Is it made of steel or aluminum? What is the it? The base of this is a solid um, heavyweight plastic. I don't you know, that's a good question of how much does it weigh? It's not super heavy, but it's got some nice heft to it to keep it stable. It's not hollow. So, so if you wanted to use it to like hold embroidery thread that you like you were doing hand embroidery and you have a lot of threads going on, you could put all four and that you could put it on a tabletop and it would sit nice and stable. Yeah. In fact, um, let me just go back to the table shot and I will take off. I was using that wool pressing mat just to, as the background, but I'll show it to you on a, um, a plain tabletop. Let me just let in Cynthia. I'll show it to you and show you how both sizes won't slide around because of those feet. So let me just move that off. That's a See, these are all things that are such good questions. I'm going to put these over here so I don't lose them. Let me move this off. Okay, so let me go here. Um, I'll show it to you with the four spools on it and also empty just as a little reminder just a, okay so let me get this okay so here it is with the four mini king spools of thread and you can see how they all sit independently now if this is just a plastic top it's just smooth if i try to move this it doesn't move it doesn't budge and I'll show it to you without anything on it too. And here are the four rubber feet. And that's what keeps this so stable. It's not moving. And then here's the small size, the universal size. Let me see if I can get the light. Oh, you can see the ring on that now. That does the same thing where it won't move. It, it really is very stable. Does yeah. that answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Dale, when you went through the tri the uh, Triumph, the baby lock, yep. you bypassed the tubes. Um, when you did the Bernina L890, you went through the tubes. How would you bypass the tubes on the L890? Would, if you're using heavier thread, would you have to do the same thing, bypass the tubes? Okay. If I... Um, 
I have actually, you yes, you can definitely bypass them. Um, when I did it on this, I put those four embroidery weight threads in my needle. So I just had the single thread in my lower looper. But let me open up the machine and I can show you exactly what you're going to do. I have to just do a, re, a little bit of rejiggering around here. Hang on just a second. Um, let me put my light on again. Okay, I've got this. Now, I'm going to move my camera over. Hopefully, it'll be in the correct position for this. Okay. Um, let me just... I have to now go to the camera to see if it's showing what I want it to show. Yep, exactly. Okay, so I do, I have my threading ports over here, okay? Now, this, you saw where those brackets were on the um, baby lock serger. So let me create a thread cradle and... Um, I'm going to get rid of the thread in my lower looper. Put my cursor for it up to get that out. Okay, so how would I bypass the threads um, on the chain looper? Okay, so let me move my camera just a little further left so that you can see. This is kind of like a bad angle. You see my needle garden down here? These are all gently used needles that when they're worn out, I toss. Okay, upper looper, lower looper, chain looper, threading ports, air threading ports. I'm gonna lock my threading tubes. Here is my um, thread cradle with my cut ends. I'm gonna put this in the chain looper and now it is you can see it over here it's come out through the chain looper eye right here okay let me pop on a thread fusion on the chain looper and i'm going to use a couple of heavier weight threads so let me i'm going to grab I, you haven't seen two eight weight threads, so I'll I'll do those and bypass the threading ports. Now, technically, can I put these through? I have actually, believe it or not, pulled two eight weight threads, which are mighty hefty threads, through the threading port. But guess what? It's hard. These are thick threads, so I would rather bypass that port and save my energy for actually stitching. So I'm gonna click that, you're not seeing the top of the machine, I'm just clicking that in. And um, I have got my thread cradle, here is my lasso or my loop. Um, let me just pull the camera so you can see that. Here's my lasso, do you all see that? If you see the loop. Okay, so I am gonna, unlock my threading tubes. You just saw them retract here. Let me bring this in so you can see what I'm doing. And I wonder if I can get a little more light in there. Okay, so here's my thread that's still in that um, uh, chain looper threading path. And I'm gonna take my locking tool because it's handy for grabbing. I'm going to pull the thread through the chain looper and pull this through right here. Okay. Here's my lasso. Now, the question was, how do I bypass it? You have these three um, bypass ports on this bracket. The blue is for the upper looper, the red is for the lower looper, and the lavender is for the chain looper. I'm in my chain looper. And I've got two eight-weight threads in here. And don't get them hung up on anything. So I'm going to put these two threads in the bracket hole for the chain looper. So I'm bypassing that threading port. 
pulling it right along just like this. It's from the top of the machine. You can kind of see it angling down here. Now I put my cut ends of those two eight-way threads in the lasso of my thread cradle. And I'm gonna pull from my chain looper eye, pull those all the way through. And I want you to watch up here. Here they are, right here. So, and I, I only need about four inches hanging down. Just like that so cool. <laughs> that's all there is to it. So that little, um, when you start again, this is where I say, put it on some scrap fabric. So this isn't all twisted and tangled in your stitching line on your project fabric. Once it's up to the top of the machine, you're good to go. But so it comes down. I put them both together through the pretension area on the top of the machine down into the chain looper threading port um, or threading hole on this bracket, the bypass bracket. I put my um, thread cradle through the air threading and the cut ends were pulled out, unlock my um, threading tubes, grab that lasso right down here, and then I can pull my threads through. So super, it's easy to do once you know Thank how you. to do it. You're welcome. Does that answer your question? You. Yes, definitely. Okay, good. Yes. Um, okay, so I think we've covered quite a bit of ground here. And I need um, to tell Santa that I've been a very good girl this year. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so it, it makes a great trick or treat present too. Halloween is even sooner, but um, yeah, definitely. Perfect. <laughs> um, so were there any more questions about anything with thread fusion, the large or the universal size, anything I didn't address? If you think of questions um, afterward, let me look in the chat here. Oh, thank you. Uh, let me just look in the chat. Um, and see. And I have two questions, Gail. Yeah. And that okay. is the first, what you've discussed today, are you going to be putting that into any kind of a publication? Uh, you mean like a written one, like a book or anything? Yes, like a book or anything. Um, I don't have any plans to do any. I do have my Surgery Essentials, Master of the Basics and Beyond book, but that one does not cover anything with Thread Fusion. It didn't even exist when I did that book. But um, I'm not planning on doing anything like a written book or anything, but this recording will be on my YouTube channel. So you can refer back to it anytime. And I think that... Um, so it's are basically they're experiential, but they learn with video more easily too. Um, but I'm not planning on doing anything written, but I will say when you're watching the videos, any of my surger tip clips on YouTube or anything that you're working on as a project at home that might not have anything to do with the tip clips, if you run into an issue or have a question about a stitch or you're not getting a good result or anything else, you can always, always either put the question in under the tip clip if it has to do with that, or you can email me directly. My email address is gail, G-A-I-L, at gailpatrice.com. And I do get back to people very quickly. Um, if I'm at an event and teaching all day, you might not hear from me till after I get back to my hotel room after dinner. But most of the time I check my emails all day long and I do answer people. And even if you're looking at an old tip clip from four or five years ago, those questions come directly into my email, no matter how old the tip clip is. So it shows up in my email and I do answer them. Every once in a while, I might miss something, but that doesn't happen too often either. Um, but if you have a question about something, I'm always happy to answer it. And it doesn't have to necessarily be about my pattern, just a question in general about your surger or anything else. So I can um, attest to this. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get oh, out of your hair. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, you're fine. Thank it you. It was wonderful. Great. I'm going to definitely buy one. Thank you. Okay. 
All where, right. Where do we place our orders? Okay, yes. so you can go to gailpatrice.com, G-A-I-L-P-A-T-R-I-C-E.com. And actually, I should probably put it in the chat. You'll go, um, you'll go over to store and you'll click on that and that will bring you to where the merchandise is and then you'll see thread fusion large or universal and again the discount code for 10 percent off all uppercase t for thread f for fusion live l-i-v-e at checkout okay so um let me Oh, it is. Yeah, well, will, you, will you have the thread fusions at Houston? Um, I probably will have a supply of them. Yes, I will. Are you Are you going to be there? Yes, I will. And I'm taking one of your classes. I can't Yay. wait. Okay, great. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. So, um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fun. Um, teaching down in Houston is really a treat. So it's exciting to do. Can but you tell us the prices? Of the universal and the large? Yes, the the large is $79.99, less than 10%. And the universal is $55.99 and less than 10%. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And um, I can get those shipped out. As I say, I just got a new supply in. I was completely out of them, and which I was... I was sort of surprised at because I hadn't done a lot of promotion because I was waiting for the universals to come in so that I'd have them. But um, I did. I sold out of a couple of different batches of them. So that's pretty exciting. But I am going to sign off. But if you think of any more questions um, or anybody else didn't ask a question that you think of later on, just shoot me an email and I'll be very happy to answer that for you. It's Gail at gailpatrice.com. My website with the store to make the purchase is gailpatrice.com, okay? So um, let me just put that in the chat. gailpatrice.com, okay, so that's it. And let me put that in, okay. There you go. So that's my website. So um, I hope you all, if I don't see some of you before the holidays, happy holidays. We've got them coming up. They're nipping at our heels. And um, I hope you have a wonderful Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you like to um, celebrate. And I thank you all for spending this time with me this afternoon. This has been delightful. So I'm thank going to you. Say thank you. And um, I'll Look forward to getting lots of questions from you and hearing from you. And also, oh, one other thing. If um, if you have a project that you finish up using Thread Fusion, I would love to see a photo of it. So you can send that to gail at gailpatrice.com as well. But thank you all so much. Thank you, Gail. And happy sewing and surging. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.